All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, I hope you're all good. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I do multicams in Final Cut Pro. Yeah. Right, so there's probably a variety of ways that you can go about doing this, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way or the best way, but here we go anyway. Hopefully you learn something. So the first thing that you're going to want to include is audio in each and every one of the clips that you're going to include in this multicam. So for example, I'm doing a screen recording here and I'm also filming myself here. So I've got the Blue Yeti microphone, which is plugged into the computer. That is going to be my main source of audio. So that is the clean, crisp audio that you guys are hearing now. And then I also have the internal microphone from the camera. I didn't bother putting a microphone on top of there because it doesn't need to be decent quality. It just needs to have some form of audio. So yeah, you wanna make sure that each and every clip has its own audio. So if I had a third camera here, that would also require its own internal audio recording. Right, so you've filmed everything, you've imported it into Final Cut Pro, and now you wanna create your multicam sequence. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the first clip, go over to the inspector. If you don't see it like this, you can click over down here where it says basic and you can choose various other formats. If you choose general, I think it gives you a bit more information. So here we have, camera angle or camera name. Now it doesn't matter which one you go with here as long as you go with the same one for each and every clip. So for this, I'm probably just gonna go with camera name. And you're basically gonna to wanna to give this some form of name so that it makes it easier to navigate the multicam. Yeah, doesn't matter. So for this, I'm gonna to wanna to put screen recording. Now for my second clip, I'm probably just gonna call this A roll. Doesn't really matter. So now we've got both of our clips labeled. What we want to do is select them both, right click, new multicam clip. So you might want to give it a name, depends really. If you've got multiple multicam clips, you might want to start giving them names. Otherwise it doesn't really matter. So for this, I'll just call it multicam tutorial. Again, it doesn't matter. So I'm quite anal when it comes to my organization in Final Cut Pro. So I like to put everything into its own kind of event or keyword collection, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So in this, I'm in the event, I'm going to put it in multicams because I've already created a multicams event. That way they're all in the same place. Starting time code. I don't know how to use time code, so I just leave this. But if you know how to use time code, I'm pretty sure that you'll understand that bit, but it's not for me. So here, you definitely want to make sure that use audio for synchronization is checked because that is gonna tell the computer how to do this. It's gonna look for the audio and then it's going to synchronize everything from the audio, which is why you need each and every angle to have its own audio source. So you want that checked. Then here, where angle assembly, because we've gone with camera name and not camera angle, clearly last time I used camera angle, you want to make sure that the one that you've labeled is the one that you're going to check. So in this case, we're gonna go with camera name. Then I just leave that automatic, automatic. I believe that it automatically knows what the sort of format, the file format is for the videos, but if these don't look right to you, or if you want them to be different, you can change that. For that, they look all right to me. All you wanna do then is press okay takes a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, depending on your computer and how good it is, but it's gonna start synchronizing that to the audio. I mean, you know, go make yourself a brew, check out my website, <laughs> affiliate links, whatever. Right, and that's it. Final Cut Pro has done all the work and created this multicam sequence for you. And you can usually tell that it's a multicam sequence because of this little symbol over in the top left-hand corner. So that's how you know it's a multicam sequence. But as you can see, it only appears to show the one angle. But don't worry, we'll get to that. All right, so now you can drag that into your timeline and this essentially acts like a compound clip. So if we double click this sequence, you'll actually see both angles are now inside the timeline, one above the other, and they should be perfectly synchronized to the audio. We can play that back to actually see if it's worked. As you can see, it's all perfectly synchronized together. Right, so there's a few things you might wanna do before you go back into editing. So this basically acts like a compound clip. So that means that any kind of adjustments that you make inside this sequence here will be affected in your main timeline, in your main project. If you look over here, you'll be able to see there's a little audio symbol, there's a little computer symbol in both clips. That means that, for example, in this scenario, I'm wanting the Blue Yeti to be my main source of audio. I don't want to use the camera. I'm never going to actually touch the audio in the camera. I just use that for the synchronization. So if you're going to do something similar to that, which is like a tutorial based thing like that, then you're going to want to make sure that the audio is highlighted in blue just for the screen recording or for the audio source that you're going to use. The other one you want to uncheck. 
Again, similarly, you may have multiple audios that you want to use and switch between rather than multiple video clips. So here you could actually change the main video sequence to be the other one and switch between the audios when you come to chop up your footage in the main timeline. We'll get to that in a minute. But for this, I'm not bothered which one is the main clip. I'll probably just use me for now because I want to cut it all with the audio and I'll sort out the screen recording later. So I'm going to keep that as it is and I'm going to make sure that my audio clip at the bottom is selected. So if we go back to the main timeline in your project, you'll see that the video is still only showing the one angle. So what do we want to do? We want to go up to view, show in viewer and then angles. So now you should be able to see both angles in your viewer. And obviously if you've got more than one angle, more than two angles, sorry, then you're going to see a few of these. You're going to see three or four. Right. So now that you can see both angles, how do you switch between them? So there's a couple of ways you might want to go about this. I'm going to tell you about the way that I don't do it because I find the other way a lot easier, but I'll explain it anyway. So if we go to our timeline, as you can see, we can still only see the one clip, but wherever I put the playhead, so if I leave the playhead there, if I just zoom in a little bit, make it a bit easier. Now, if I hover over to the various views, you can see a pair of scissors. So if I click on the other angle, it's going to make a cut down here. And then everything to the right of that cut is going to be the angle that you've chosen. So then if I go over here, a little bit further on and then choose the next one. Again, it's made a cut in that exact position and everything to the right is now going to be the A roll view. But I don't necessarily enjoy editing that way. I don't like cutting everything up and choosing the angle as I go. I kind of like getting rid of all the rubbish first, pulling the video down. And then once I've chopped everything up, then I'll go back and I'll choose each and every angle. So I'll show you how I do that. But what I'm going to do is actually show you a condensed version of this where I've chopped everything up just as you would do in a normal timeline. Right, so here's a timeline I made earlier. And as you can see, I've gone through the footage and I've chopped it up as if it was just like a compound clip or any other sequence, not done anything different to just going through it, get rid of all my pauses, all my ums and ahs. And I've now got the timeline that I want. But as I play it back, you'll see that it is simply just me. There's no angle of the screen recording. So how do I go about now changing those cuts to have the screen recording instead? So if we go up to the top of the viewer, you'll see three little icons. The one on the top left looks like it's got a little film roll with a little bit of an audio clip. And then the other one's just the film roll and just the audio. I'm pretty sure you can figure this out for yourself, but whichever is actually highlighted will affect the choice that you make. So if you want to show the clip of the talking head, or if you want to show the screen recording, while you've got it on this setting here, it will also choose the audio as well as the video itself. So depending on how you've shot this and how you've shot your video, you may want to change between the audio, change between the video only, or you may want to switch between both. It all depends on how you shot your project and what you're doing. But in this particular example, I'm wanting to stick with the audio from the computer. I'm not wanting to change that at all. All I want to do is switch between the video clips themselves. So I want to make sure that this middle one is selected and not the other two. So when I make my changes now, all it will affect is the camera angle. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your playhead is hovered over that clip. But the difference here, instead of clicking on the angle, because that'll just put another cut in your timeline and you don't want to do that because you've already done that. But instead you want to hold option and command at the same time. And now you'll see that it changes to a little hand icon. So instead of the scissors, we've now got the hand. So now if I just click on the screen recording, that clip has now changed to showing the screen recording, which is fantastic. So you can now just go through your entire project, make those changes throughout your whole timeline. Right, so now that we've gone through the entire timeline and we've chosen our angles and we've cut it all up and we've got everything the way we want, we can start elevating this to make it look even better. So as you can see, my screen recording has all this information at the top. It has the date and time. It has all the apps showing at the bottom. It looks a little bit messy, a little bit distracting for you guys. So it's not necessarily pleasant to look at. As I said before, it acts like a compound clip. So anything that you do inside this multicam is going to infect your entire, infect? It's going to affect your entire timeline. So if we double click into the multicam, so this is the main multicam that we had at the beginning, you've got both angles. I'll just zoom out a little bit. Now, if I just change my screen recording into a compound clip, because you can create compound clips within the multicam sequence. So I'm going to change this into a compound clip. Let's right click, new compound clip. I'll just call it screen recording comp. And I'll put it in multicams. Why not? So now we have this compound clip. And I'm going to go into the compound clip. And here I'm going to search for in my effects letterbox. 
So here's the letterbox. I'm just going to drag that over the top. And now I'm going to increase the size, probably up to like 0.4. And then I want to offset it a little bit, maybe make that a little bit bigger, something like that. So now all of a sudden I've got rid of all that bump and all that stuff that you guys don't want to see. So if we go back to our main timeline now, it's there. How good is that? So that will affect your entire timeline, your entire project. As easy as that. So how good is that? And because it works like a compound clip, you can now do all of your master adjustments. So things like your audio. So you want to elevate your audio, make your audio sound better. You can do that adjustment inside the multicam compound clip. You want to color grade your main multicam video clip. So you just go into your multicam, click on the clip. I've already done this myself, so I'm just going to turn it on and off. But all I need to do is turn on my effects. Boom, color graded. If I go back into my main timeline, each and every clip it's color graded. They're all done. How much quicker is that? Your computer doesn't need to burn out and explode. You can do all this at the end and then export. I don't need to go into the main timeline and copy and paste all these color adjustments, put adjustment layers over the top, all that rubbish. I can simply just do it in here. So how cool is that? I mean, multicams are so powerful. It makes it so much easier to edit as well because you can edit everything raw before you do all your final adjustments, which just slow your computer down. You can even do it to the audio. So if you go back into the multi cam click on your compound clip for the audio which was the screen recording in this case and then you can make all your adjustments over here in this right hand corner for your audio you know make it bassy make it sound a lot more crisper get rid of some noise whatever it is you may want to do then go back and all the effects will happen throughout your timeline for that multi-cam sequence i mean it's fantastic it's really good, really powerful. I use it all the time, especially if you're going to do some sort of tutorial, works like a treat. So that's pretty much the basics, really. I mean, obviously, I've only used two clips in this whole example. You might have like five or six or seven. I don't know how many camera angles you might have. You might have an audio source that's completely separate and then have two video clips or three video clips. It depends. Everybody's going to be different, but hopefully this tutorial has shown you the basics of how to do it. And then from there, you can use your own imagination and you can create some something amazing. Right, so I'm going to show you one more thing which will hopefully help elevate your video even more. So if we go inside the multicam, we've got our two clips. And the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that both clips or all of your clips inside your multicam start at the exact same time. So as you can see, they are in line there. There isn't one that's shifted over. It all depends on how it's synchronized it together and when the audio started from when you pressed record. But we just want to make sure that they line up together. And as we did with the screen recording, we're going to want to make this one as well a compound clip. So it doesn't matter what we call it. So now both clips are compound clips. So if we go inside this one and we select the clip and we command and C, which is going to copy that, go into the screen recording compound clip and then command and V, just lift that above, go back to the beginning, make sure that they start at the beginning. Now you're going to want to completely mute this down, but also what we're going to want to do is scale it down something like 30%, move this, somewhere in the bottom right hand corner. Go to our effects panel, type in simple, and then we'll get simple border. Hover that over the clip. Go back to your effects, make sure they're turned on. Choose whatever width you want your border to be. I like 20 for some reason. So now we want to select the screen recording, command and C. Go back to our multicam into the other angle. Go back to the beginning, command and V. Place that above. Make sure that they start at the very beginning. Now, if we go back, to our screen recording compound clip, select the reduce size clip, command and C again, go back, go to the project clip, select the screen recording, go to edit, paste properties. All we want here is the simple border and also transform and position. Press paste. And as you will see, that's now put that in the bottom right hand corner. So when you go back to your main timeline, you now have this very professional looking edit where you've got both views, both camera angles available in the same window. But a reduced size in the corner. Looks pretty cool. It's very effective. And that's it. You've created this multicam sequence, this multicam project. Looks very professional. It's very effective, very easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If you would like to see more, please consider subscribing, hit the bell, all those nice things, and I shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh.